privilege today to introduce my son, Amen, who is going to be the preacher for the hour. Evangelist GDK John Wango, my only son. We've been talking about this sermon for some time, and he I actually owe him. He's been wanting to preach over and over. So he came up with his sermon title, he came up with his scripture reading, he came up with his sermon, he came up with his songs. I said, wow, glory to God. So today I ask you to join me as we listen to the word of God through the son of God, child of God, that God has chosen for the hour to speak the word of life in our situation. God bless you. Amen. Good morning, happy Sabbath, God's people. It is my pleasure to welcome you to celebrate the amazing grace of God with me today. I am happy to welcome you to Grace World Christian Fellowship, where Jesus reigns and the grace of God goes to you. Amen. Amen. I am excited to share the wonderful message of God's love and grace with you this morning. Can you join me and say, Amen. Amen. Today the message I bring to you is titled, Jesus Died on the Cross. Jesus Died on the Cross. Let us pray. God, I thank you for all the things you have done. Please touch people's hearts so they will be your friend. And please give me wisdom. Bless all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today in our everyday activities, we have become too careless about Jesus and his death on the cross. Could this be because we have seen too many crosses? Could this be because, we, because many people in churches have the cross? Even in Grace Road, in our pulpit, we have the cross in front of it. Please don't misunderstand me. I am not against seeing the cross. But like any other thing we have in our homes, like our toys, our school bags, our cars, our clothes, our toothbrush, the cross can lose its power in life if we become too filled familiar with it. But I don't want this to happen to you because that would be too bad. Now think about this. For many people, the cross is nothing more than a piece of jewelry that they put on their hand, on their neck, or like the clock we hang in our homes. For some others, the cross is just something designed for worship. They kneel before the cross and talk to it or pray to it. Some see this cross as something that contains supernatural power. They think they can just hang the cross over their bed or carry it so the devil will not come to them. To understand the message I'm talking about today, I want you to see the death of Jesus on the cross in three ways. First, the first is a message of torment. Second, the second is a message of tragedy. Third, the third is a message of triumph, testimony, and hope. Let us consider the account of the scriptures about how Jesus died on the cross. Please patiently follow me and let us read from Luke chapter 3, verse 23 to 49. And there they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it could be as they required. And he released unto them 
that for the sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon a Cyrene coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the ones that never bear, and the paths which never gain suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And they were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to place, which is called Calvary, they were crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they parted his women and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with him derided, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him, and that is in Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged wailed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation nation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour. And there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the evil of temple was rent in, in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. And has said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly there was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their priests and returned. And all his acquaintance and the woman that followed him from Galilee stood afar off beholding these things. A message of torment. The message of the cross 
is a message of torment, pain, suffering, and death. Many times we are told in these accounts from Luke that Jesus was crucified. To crucify means to nail one to a stake. The death that Jesus died on the cross was a horrible and a very painful death. The death of Jesus on the cross was so bad and painful. The pain was just too much that Jesus was crying so much. Can you imagine that they drove nails inside his hands and legs? The bad guys just would not let Jesus go. So they tormented him so much and killed Jesus. First, Jesus was arrested, tried, convicted, and the temple police beat him with all kinds of things. He had been taken to Pilate where he was abused by Pilate's soldiers. He was sentenced to die and suffered as he carried the big cross along the way. Even when he was very weak and later they put a crown with thorns on his head. The guys were really bad. If you can remember all experienced and multiply it like 10,000 times, you will not come close to experience the type of pain Jesus is doing on the cross to give your life meaning and direction. When prophet Isaiah looked into the future, he saw the death of the Messiah and he described it in Isaiah 53 verse 1 to 5. The New Living Translation reads, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant who has believed our message, to whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet, it was there with this he guided. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. God a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. <coughs> he was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. The question is, why would Jesus endure this kind of torment and death? There is only one answer. Because Jesus loves you so much that he is willing to give everything to save you and set you free. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2 says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because we belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads you to death. Amen. John 3.16 says, For this 
is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. The cross is not a door or a toothbrush. It is not an amulet for superstition. The cross is not an idol to be worshipped. The cross is a symbol of God's love for us. Therefore, let us glory in the cross of Jesus and praise the Lord for what he did for us. For it is the door into new life for all who know Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. A message of tragedy. The death of Jesus on the cross is a message of tragedy. Can you believe that the bad guys killed Jesus when he was only 33 years old? I am sure that you do not, you don't want to die just at 33 years only. But that is what happened to Jesus. As Jesus hung on the cross, giving his life because our sins, his enemies circled him like a flock of hungry lions. They hated him so much that they even made fun of him and asked him to the question as he died. In Luke 23 verse 36, they even mocked Jesus. To mock means to play with a kind idea of making fun of a person with a desire to harm that person. It can also mean to say evil things about a person. The bad temple police and soldiers were mocking Jesus, telling him to come down from the cross if he was really who he claimed to be. They said he saved others, himself he cannot save. The tragedy in the cross is seen in two different ways. First, it is a tragedy that people who needed Jesus more in their life are the same people who reject him as it is seen in their attitude toward Jesus. The question is, are we not doing the same thing that the Jews did to Jesus? Jesus came to save us and take us in the kingdom of God. The other question is, are we men? The death of Jesus on the cross was never a plan B. Every day people confirm the rejection of Jesus by the life they live, by their words, by their character, and by the things they do. What a tragedy. The second point is that the death of Jesus on the cross is tragic because it brings into sharp focus the true character and weakness of the human heart as revealed by their actions against Jesus. These actions remind us that people are hopeless without God's intervention and grace. The question is, what is our relationship to the cross of Jesus? Does it reveal the condition of your heart? Is Jesus your friend? Or do you treat him as your dog? dog? Think about it. A message of triumph, testimony, and hope. The message of the death of Jesus on the cross is a message of triumph, testimony, and hope. After six hours on the cross, Jesus dismissed his spirits when he knew that the price for sin had been paid and God was inter internally satisfied as he said, Father, into your hands. I commit my spirit and he died. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, the Bible says that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, that sinners will be saved. 
The words of Jesus from the cross were not the words of a victim, but the shouts of a victor. Amen. Can you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Like Jesus said on the cross, he did not say, I am finished. But he said, it is finished. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. What Jesus said on the cross is that death showed the defeat of three terrible enemies of humanity. First, Jesus' death on the cross shows that the devil, the devil is defeated. Amen. Amen. Two, Jesus' death on the cross shows the defeat of sin. Amen. And thirdly, Jesus' death on the cross shows the defeat of eternal separation for everyone who will accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Amen. The cross of Jesus is far more than death, suffering, and blood. The death of Jesus on the cross is a place of testimony. It was here that God made his greatest declaration of his love for you. The good news is that there is hope. First John 3, verse 1 to 3 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of and daughters of God. The International Children's Bible puts it, it, it this way. The Father has loved us so much. He loved us so much that we are called children of God. And we really are his children. But the people in the world do not understand that we are God's children. Because they don't, have not known him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. We have not yet been shown that we will be in the future. But we know that when Christ comes again, we will be like him. We will see him as really he is. Christ is here. And every person who has this hope in Christ keeps himself pure like Christ. What is the cross of Jesus to you? Is it merely a piece of jewelry? Is it just a religious symbol? Is it a talisman drum you hang over your bed to keep the devil away? Is it pure foolishness? Or is it the cross, the power of God unto salvation? If you will heed the message of the cross, you will find that the salvation is still available. You will find that God can still save souls, change eternal designs, and transform sinners into saints of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Today will be a good day to say, Jesus, Lord, I confess my sins to you. I ask you for your forgiveness. All of it, dear Jesus, I ask you to come in my heart and change me from the inside and outside for who I am, Lord Jesus. I know that you died for me on the cross and I accept you into my life. As my Lord and personal Savior, I am now a born again. Amen. Amen. If you accept Jesus into your life, I ask you to join me as we sing together. All to Jesus, I surrender. Him to your life. <laughs> 